Supporters of outgoing U.S. President Donald Trump have attempted to storm the Capitol building to support his latest effort to overturn his election defeat. They're calling for President Trump to remain in office, citing unsubstantiated claims of widespread election fraud. A protest became increasingly violent as crowds breached a barricade and scaled the steps of the Capitol building. Some protesters entered the building and clashed with police. Congress is currently in the process of certifying Joe Biden's presidential victory, but several Republican senators have challenged the tally of electoral college votes. Now, President Trump spoke at the rally earlier and called on fellow Republicans to reject the presidential election uh, results, claiming Mike Pence should single-handedly overturn Joe Biden's win. All Vice President Pence has to do is send it back to the states to recertify, and we become president, and you are the happiest people. All right, let's go to uh, Washington, where we join DW's uh, uh, Washington bureau chief in his poll. Uh, welcome, Innes. Let's uh, start with this, uh, these disturbances, then. Um, uh, we've heard that people are actually in the Capitol or on the Capitol steps, and there are clashes with police. Fill us in. Right, that's true, and we hear that they have weapons in their hands and that there was tear ga gas involved and uh, that people are leaving uh, the building. Those people who are Ill really have to kind of execute uh, their duty today because, after all, this is the day when the uh, Senate and the House kind of agree on who the next president of the, elect uh, president of the United States will be. So, yes, it's, it's chaos. Uh, it's police all over the City. The D.C. mayor uh, just announced a curfew from 6 p.m. Uh, today uh, until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. So this is absolutely unprecedented. The United States has never seen something like that before. So let's just walk us through then the, the sequence of events, because this, this started with a, a Trump a rally, which was more or less peaceful. Right, Phil. So people came together here last night and there were some minor clashes with police, but nothing big. And then they gathered uh, very early this morning. I was down there uh, until actually a couple of, uh, uh, yeah, until uh, 30 minutes ago. People were really peaceful. I talked to them. They came here to protest uh, the electoral outcome. They said it's rigged, but it was in a very peaceful uh, manner, most of the people. I mean, you saw some uh, proud boys, some kind of militias who were a little bit more aggressive uh, in, in the town, and they kind of gathered together. But the majority was very, very peaceful and calm until President Donald Trump came on. He delivered a speech uh, repeating the claim falls, uh, the, uh, the false claims that the election were stolen. Then he called those senators who were just about to object the outcome of the electoral vote by name, so uh, kind of to support them. And then, and I think this is very, very important for this whole story, then he asked his supporters to march into the direction uh, of the Senate. And that is what happened. We saw, like, thousands of people uh, moving towards uh, the Senate. And then, well, we just hear what happens then. People stormed. Uh, some people stormed the Senate. And it's, it's, it's chaos now. And uh, we're looking at live pictures as you talk. So they're, they're, they're uh, I don't know, they're looking like that, well, a few, certainly in the hundreds, uh, possibly thousands of, of people there. And have they actually got into the building? And, and because this was while um, the, they were actually considering the, 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 the votes from um, the electoral colleges. Exactly, Phil. They just objected uh, the first vote uh, of the state of Arizona. They just uh, wanted to start a, a two hours debate. That's the procedure. Uh, then the two houses would have voted on that. Uh, but with then, kind of the, the, the masses kind of stormed the house, and a couple of people obviously got into the building. We hear that senators and House representatives were hiding under tables. 
The situation is very unclear. I just uh, heard uh, some police officers uh, saying that they have to end the situation before it's getting dark. It's probably another two hours or so, so that everything is not getting out of hand. And again, we have to keep in mind, today is a very, very important day because they are coming together uh, to, by the end of the, uh, the day, decide who the next president of the United States will be. And in this very moment, people storm the capital of the United States. Supporters of the current president, of President Donald Trump, storm the capital of these United States to stop this democratic procedure from happening. So lawmakers had objected to the electoral um, uh, college vote. There was a, a debate was going on and these uh, people who have stormed the building, they have stopped that debate from happening because as far as I understand it, that session has now ended. That is true, Phil. That is what we hear. But the problem is, if you want to say so, they have to continue to, to vote today because this is a, a kind of the law. This is what the Constitution says. On January 6, this year, in 2021, uh, they have to kind of decide who the next president of the United States will be. There was no doubt. Uh, that the majority of both the House and the Senate by the end of the day would vote uh, for, would support, I shall rather say, uh, President-elect uh, Joe Biden, and in that regard, just stick uh, to, to the Constitution and fulfill uh, their democratic duty. But at this very moment, everything is interrupted. Interrupted. Nobody knows what is going to happen next. Uh, so it's a break. They, break, they, they, they stopped everything. Uh, uh, but... I mean, lawmakers say that's the first thing, the first reactions we get here in the United States. They have to come together again and kind of continue this procedure to, in, to make sure that the next president of the United States can be inaugurated on January 20th. So uh, everybody now is waiting for Donald Trump uh, to react. He sent out a tweet saying, please stay peaceful. This is kind of, allow me to say that, ridiculous if you see these pictures because this is kind of the opposite of being peaceful. Uh, what I hear from or what I actually read um, that Republicans kind of force him or ask him, please send out a, ple uh, a, a tweet to, to, to kind of calm uh, your supporters down to stop them from trying to get into the, the Capitol and, and violate uh, this whole democratic process from happening. Uh, we don't know what is going to happen. Mm. Police uh, hopes that they can kind of bring this together before it's getting dark but again it's 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 unprecedented the united states has never seen something like that and just, just as you're as you're talking there we're still um, looking at live pictures of uh, what's going on there in us and it does look like uh, hundreds and uh, maybe in the the low thousands uh, of, of people uh, there i'm just watching the wires and i see that the the u.s defense department has denied the request by washington dc officials to deploy the national guard uh, that's according to a Washington Post reporter uh, on Twitter. And all this, Enos, while um, Vice President Mike Pence was in the building. Right. Uh, and he just kind of fulfilled uh, his duty. Even so, Donald Trump asked him uh, in front of these tens of thousands of people gathering at the mall in front of the White House to not do that, to stop the process uh, uh, from uh, Joe Biden uh, becoming the next uh, uh, president of the United States. I have to say, Joe, uh, um, Mike Pence, Vice President, uh, Vice President uh, Mike Pence, uh, um, stood with the Constitution. Uh, he, he didn't get uh, kind of forced by, uh, uh, by Donald Trump to act in any way anti-democratic, but he is, or he at least was, in the building. I also hear that he might uh, have been taken away because this is a, a threat to him, right? So we shall see, but he has an official role to play in this whole procedure uh, we are witnessing uh, uh, today. OK. Um, I'm just uh, looking at the wires here. I see that Re Republican uh, Senator M uh, Mitt Romney uh, is saying that uh, Donald Trump has caused this insurrection. That's according to the, uh, the new, uh, new York Times uh, reporter on uh, Twitter. Now, uh, Enos, 
This is a process, this, this certification uh, of, uh, of the Electoral College votes. This process must happen. But is there a time limit? Do, is there, when does it have to happen by? Does it have to happen tonight? Well, yes, uh, and everybody was expecting it to be a long process because um, they can kind of obje object uh, the electoral vote and then uh, they start or are able uh, to have a two hours debate and then, the, uh, then it moves on and nobody was expecting it to take longer uh, than until midnight. So, Phil... Very frankly, I don't know what is going to happen if they aren't finished by midnight. It looks like that this might very well uh, be happening. I think at this very moment, hardly anybody has an answer. So uh, we will learn that over the next hours. I'm sure that many, many uh, lawmakers are looking into that right now. It's a total uh, un unprecedented uh, situation right now. So we'll, we will follow it closely and... Uh, uh, yeah, we'll share all the informations we are getting uh, here from the United States. And I want to comment on Mitt Romney's uh, comments, Phil, if I might. I mean, have, I have been down at the mall for a couple of hours uh, today. And again, it was very, very peaceful until, until Donald Trump uh, uh, delivered his speech and really pulling uh, uh, oil into the uh, fire and, and heating our, our really kind of uh, getting his people ready uh, to move towards uh, the capital. And this is the outcome of this speech he de delivered. This is uh, what I think it's fair to say. Well, it's fair what, what Mitt Romney said. He kind of started everything we are witnessing in this very moment. You're watching DW News and you're looking at live pictures of uh, what's going on at the uh, US Capitol at the moment, as you can see. Uh, it looks like uh, people in the, the low, in the hundreds, maybe a couple of thousand people have stormed uh, the US uh, Capitol uh, building at the uh, end uh, of a, or during uh, a session in which uh, a Senate was, uh, 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 in which Congress was looking at uh, certifying the results of uh, November's presidential election. Uh, our, our correspondent in Washington, uh, Ines Paul, is with us. She was uh, out uh, uh, amongst uh, those uh, protesters as uh, Donald Trump um, uh, talked to them a little earlier today before this happened. Uh, Ines, uh, tell us uh, about the police reaction. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of police uh, downtown anyhow, and the mayor of D.C. put out a warning a couple of days ago urging uh, the, uh, the people of Washington not to go down uh, to the mall because obviously some violence was expected. But, uh, and I mean, I think uh, the pictures we see prove that obviously the police or the law enforcement wasn't really prepared for that to happen. Happened. Uh, there is a lot of like tanks and everything coming now, moving now uh, towards uh, the capital. Uh, we see also uh, policemen on horses, uh, uh, and everybody seems to to go there now in, in uniform to calm down the situation. Uh, the the obviously the the uh, the police wasn't prepared uh, that people really really would try to to storm the capital uh, of the. United United States, even so, some violence was expected. I think it was really the words of Donald Trump uh, who, who made these people move so fast. There was a lot of energy out there. People had their speakers, move to the Capitol, move to the, to the Capitol. The Capitol is ours. Don't give the Capitol away after Donald Trump delivered his speech. Before that, everything was pretty calm and people just exercised their right to demonstrate. OK, uh, we'll leave it there for now, uh, Ines. Uh, Ines Paul is uh, DW's uh, Washington Bureau uh, Chief, keeping an eye on uh, things uh, for us there. Uh, more from her later in the course of the programme. But for now, Ines, thank you. Now, uh, so all this has gone on while uh, Joe Biden's Democrats uh, have moved closer to taking control of the Senate uh, following two runoff elections in Georgia. Predictions show Raphael Warnock winning his contest, which would make him the state's first black senator. The rising star John Ossoff has claimed victory after gaining a narrow lead in his race.
Democrats need to win both seats to help President-elect Biden advance his agenda in the Senate. Another nail-biting election in the United States. Georgia is bracing for a political upset in the traditionally red state as Democrats are poised to unseat Republicans in twin runoff elections. Raphael Warnock's victory has already been projected. If the result is confirmed, he would become the first black senator to be elected from the state. So I come before you tonight as a man who knows that the improbable journey that led me to this place in this historic moment in America could only happen here. We were told that we couldn't win this election. But tonight, we prove that with hope, hard work, and the people by our side, anything is possible. But for his rival, Senator Kelly Loeffler, anything is still possible. Well, we're going to make sure every vote is counted. Every, that's right. <laughs> every, every legal vote will be counted, and I'm not going to stop working. The race will determine President-elect Biden's chances of pushing his agenda through Congress. Let's talk to uh, Ahmed Nouripour, who's a foreign policy spokesman for the Greens in Germany's parliament and a member of the Bundestag's Foreign Affairs Committee. He's also deputy chairman of the German-US Parliamentary Friendship Group. Welcome to DW, sir. Uh, can we start with your reaction uh, to this news that the, the US Senate has gone into emergency recess as these uh, uh, pro-Trump supporters uh, have stormed the Capitol building? The pictures are absolutely shocking. It's uh, absolutely unforgivable that people are incited to uh, go to, to, the, to the Senate and then to breach even the floor of the Senate and interrupt a constitutional formal process of uh, the confirmation of a president-elect of the country. Uh, I think the American democracy is strong enough and the checks and balances at the end of the day are going to work. But what happened this, this evening is a massive breach of political, cultural, and democratic culture of, of the United States. And I hope that it's going to be a wake-up call for a lot of people who uh, supported the inciters yet uh, to, uh, to wake up. And uh, hopefully, they're going to uh, find ways to break their polarization, which is leading to this situation. Where do you believe this incitement has come from? You know, uh, I saw that president, uh, the current president, just just uh, uh, demanded for peaceful protest. But as we heard from from Ines Paul just just a few minutes ago, the people has been very peaceful when they protested there until uh, Donald Trump delivered his speech, uh, asking them to, to march today, to to today to the hill and, and to interrupt what is happening. And of course, we're talking about a constitutional formal procedure. And people coming from outside just can interrupt that with violence, by violence, and this is what they did. And this is why I think this incitement is uh, definitely um, disgraceful and is obviously coming from the person who is the most responsible one for keeping the Constitution in the United States. And that is who? This is the, the current president of the country, and this is, is this is of course harming the, the democracy. But I hope this gonna lead to the, to a wake up call for for those people in the GOP who uh, played his polariz polarization uh, game yet, and, and now they come together and find solutions for the country in a very very um, uh, crucial moment. So no doubt in your mind that Donald Trump caused this uh, disorder. I don't know if he caused that because, you know, at the end of the day, those people who uh, committed crimes by, by attacking uh, armed forces of the country are doing it by themselves and this is their responsibility not to do so. But having a president of the country just, just denying any procedure which is given by the Constitution is, of course, harmful and is one of the factors leading to this situation, which is shocking, which is, of course, not only by, done by people who woke up in the morning and, and decided to attack the, the, the Hill, but of course got some, some incitement by the current president 
just being told all the time that uh, they have to fight a fraud which never has been um, proven, uh, there never had been um, uh, evidences for, uh, of, of, of the so-called stolen uh, elections of the United States of America. And this is underlining the trust of the people, of course. Record numbers of people voted for Donald Trump in, uh, in November's elections. Um, an even greater record number of people, of course, voted for Joe Biden. But what does this say about the next four years of American political life? Uh, you know, after the last ele general elections, I, I traveled to, um, to West Virginia, to McDowell County because this was the county with the highest rate of the voters for Donald Trump. He got, I think, 94% of the people in McDowell County voted for Donald Trump in 2016. I wanted to understand. And what I saw there were, were a super crisis of poverty and opioid, um, and, and people uh, just were rid of a system in, in Washington which is not taking care for them, which is not even giving, giving it a... They're giving some, some attention for, to their situation. And Donald Trump gave them the feeling that this has changed. And giving these people not only a feeling of, of being seen, but also solutions for their situation, this is the huge task in the middle of a COVID crisis. This is the huge task of, 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 of the next uh, um, um, administration in the United States. And I think it's going to be an output legitimacy which has to be brought up by by Joe Biden's administration. This is a huge task in, it, in this kind of polarization we are seeing, which just, as you, just you mentioned, has been manifested uh, by the election results we saw and we, by, by the turnout, by the way, we saw today in Georgia also. Just going back to uh, the disorder uh, now on the uh, Capitol, we've been just looking at um, live pictures there. What do you think the police should do about this? I think um, that, that this is the, the last thing the police in, uh, in, in Washington, D.C. in this moment needs are people from thousands of miles away giving them advices. Uh, and I think the American democracy at the end of the day is strong enough to stand such a thing. We had a very similar situation to that a couple of months ago in Berlin also, having people who tried to breach uh, the German Bundestag, uh, tried to storm it and could overcome the first the uh, line of, uh, of, of the police, um, and it, this was this were disgraceful pictures we had there. Um, this, this is very similar to that what we are seeing now in, in in DC. But at the end of the day, our democracies are strong enough. It depends of us as demo democrat, and I'm not talking about democrat as a party, but as, mm -hmm. as, as people who are uh, stick to democracy uh, to to calm down the situation, to overcome the polarization of, in our societies and to deliver. So at the end of the day, they, the trust of the people into our democratic system is, is, is growing again. So this, these are the scenes that we're looking at now. These are in the, in the, the last few weeks of uh, Donald Trump's presidency. Do you expect him to fade off quietly uh, into the distance once Joe Biden is uh, inaugurated in a couple of weeks? What we learned for the last four years, and unfortunately some kind of has been get used to, is not uh, not to exclude something when it comes to the current president, and also not expecting anything being done uh, quietly. So, of course, as a as a current president of, of the United States, sitting in the most powerful chair in the world, he still can do a lot of things. Um, I just can hope that this next two weeks going to be uh, more peaceful than today in Washington, D.C. Uh, by the way, I also hope that there won't be any violence um, after the speeches we saw today in, in Georgia this evening. So, um, no, I just can't exclude anything, but uh, two weeks or um, a timeline, I think we can survive together. All right. So, what's, uh, as we leave you, what is the biggest thing that you are you are hoping for from the next president? That he can deliver. That he's not too preoccupied by the domestic situation in the United States uh, to uh, get involved in international politics, and that the United States, uh, of course, especially the two parties, can come together 
and deliver and, and, and create and develop uh, solutions for, for a country which is in, um, in uh, which is faced with a lot of challenges. The Americans need solutions. The American people, like the Germans also, do not need polarization. And this is uh, what democratic parties, the Republicans and Democrats in the United States, and also the, the parties in Germany has to understand and how to work on. All right, we thank you for joining us. Uh, Abid Nouripour, Green Member of the Bundestag's Foreign Affairs Committee.